Good morning. It's Monday, July 25th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, In That Day, and our scriptures, Hosea's Prophecy, Chapter 2. In that day I will answer, says the Lord, I will answer the sky as it pleads for clouds, and the sky will answer the earth with rain. Then the earth will answer the thirsty cries of the grain, the grapevines, and the olive trees, and they will in turn answer Jezreel, God plants. At that time I will plant a crop of Israelites and raise them for myself. I will show love to those I called not loved, And to those I called not my people, I will say, Now you are my people. And they will reply, You are our God. There are a lot of people who are fond of the argument from silence. The lack of an easily located answer is the one note sung for such a conclusion. It sounds something like, Well, if he doesn't walk like a duck, or talk like a duck, or act like a duck at all, there can't possibly be a duck here. When something unpleasant happens, persons who are looking for someone to blame find a silent heaven convenient. Have you ever seen someone raise an angry face or fist toward the heavens and dare God to show himself? That sounds something like, If you're really there, I dare you to strike me dead. Five seconds later, I thought so. Hosea's prophecy is very much filled with judgment over the sins of Israel's unfaithfulness as God's people. However, there is much about God's redemption of Israel hiding in the wings. This is the connection with the anger many people feel over their perceived lack of action on God's part. The assumption is that since they see no judgment for wrongdoing and injustice, God is either sleeping on the job, a fraud in his claims, or he never existed at all. The problem with arguing a so-called proof from silence is that it presupposes we humans are even remotely capable of judging God. After all, we are the created beings, God is the creator. And it is always the lesser which is contained within the greater, not the other way around. God transcends time, eternity, and all knowledge because he created such. To assume we know better than God is to take upon oneself a fool's mantle. We're like a child sitting on a curb at the parade that's already half passed by our location. He remembers the guy with the baton leading the band at the parade start, but as he looks back the other way, he cannot see the end of the line where the elephants are bringing up the end of the show. He can't see clearly all that's coming. He's limited to what he sees passing right now. God, above the whole business, can see the baton-twirling lead at the parade's front and the sweepers at the end of the parade cleaning up after the elephants. He sees everything before, in between, and after. Hosea has been told by the God who is outside of time and space and who sees all of history and the future at once that in the time that he has chosen, in that day, The judgment will be an answer for even the foolish questioning of the skeptic, the atheist, and all fools. That answer will include God judging, loving, restoring, and settling whatever questions that exist and more. He will balance the scales in that day. For you today, let's let the Apostle Paul's doxology of praise to God sum up today from Ephesians chapter 3. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.